You know how it goes sometimes. You're at a party, things go well, and then you get a phone call a few weeks later to say, ha ha, you've got new family. Well, on that topic, here we're going to discuss some alien species. I bet you didn't know we're related. Make sure that you get a chance to go back and read the original article by Marcia Fry, and thanks so much to Melron, who has turned this video into something worth watching. Yes, are all awesome. Everyone, let's get to it. Here are 10 alien alien species that are actually related. Number 10, Vulcans and Romulans. The Vulcans and the Romulans are the most well-known species to share a common ancestor. The Romulans were Vulcans who left the home world during the time of awakening when Surak began reforming their society and teaching Vulcans to purge their emotions. Eventually, these rogue Vulcans made a new home world in the Romulus system. Many Romulans kept the appearance of Vulcans, but those who lived in the north of the planet adapted to have stronger V-shaped head ridges. The Romulans show us what Vulcan society may have been like if they never embraced Surak's teachings. They were just as intelligent but more power-hungry and isolationist. The Romulans fought a war against Earth in the mid-22nd century, but since the two sides never directly saw one another, humanity didn't learn that they were related to their Vulcan allies until about a century later. It was a long and difficult process, but the Romulans were finally reunited with their Vulcan siblings in the 32nd century. The planet Vulcan was renamed Nivar in the name of Unity, and the two species were finally able to coexist peacefully. Number 9. Ferengi and Dopterians. The first appearance of a Dopterian was in the Deep Space Space Nine episode, The Forsaken. In the episode, someone at Quark's bar stole Loxana Troy's latinum hair brooch. Because Loxana was telepathic, Odo realised that the thief must have been a species that was immune to mind reading, such as the Ferengi, whose four-lobed brains could not be read by Betazoids like Loxana. However, he soon discovered that the thief was actually a Dopterian, who he explained were distantly related to the Ferengi, sharing their resistance to telepathy. The Ferengi and the Dopterians share the same wrinkled noses, but otherwise look totally different, suggesting the two species split off from each other very very long ago. It's likely that the Dopterians left Ferenginar long ago. This would explain why they don't show up often in the Ferengi societies we've seen. There's also another species we've seen called the Cobarians, who look just like Dopterians but with elongated nostrils instead of the Ferengi-like noses. Maybe the Dopterians were created by Ferengi mating with Cobarians, which could explain why they have the characteristics of both species. Number 8. Andorians and Enar. Fans of Star Trek Enterprise were delighted to see an Enar, Lieutenant Hemmer, serving aboard Pike's Enterprise in Strange New Worlds, even though he unfortunately didn't stick around for too long. R.I.P. Hammer, we're still not okay. The Enterprise episode of the Enar explained that they were a subspecies of Andorians, who were believed to be a myth by Andorian society until they were discovered living in the northern wastes of Andoria in 2104. At this time, their population consisted of only a few thousand. The Enar differ from the Andorians in many ways. They have white skin and they're blind, but possess highly powerful telepathic abilities that more than compensate for their lack of vision. They can communicate telepathic and read minds, and they practice a strict Pacific ideology. Since they lived on the same moon, it's likely that the Enar joined the Federation along with the Andorians when the organization was first created, making them a lesser known founding species of the UFP. Number seven, Tribbles and Attack Tribbles. While the crew was searching Daystrom Station in the Picard episode, The Bounty, Worf came across one of the most horrific abominations Starfleet has ever created, the mighty Attack Tribble. Worf noticed a Tribble on the display of the containment cell, but when it jumped to the glass, he quickly learned that this was no ordinary Tribble. It had multiple fanged mouths and moved quickly and aggressively. The display stated that the Tribble was genetically modified, suggesting that Section 31 engineered this species in their lab to use in combat. Imagine if one of these things got loose and started breeding. The trouble with Tribbles would turn into the trauma with Tribbles. The Jem'Hadar are frankly lucky that these were never used during the Dominion War because they're just pure nightmare fuel. Maybe the Klingons were right about Tribbles after all. They can be deadly. Number 6. The Ba'ul and Kelpians. The Ba'ul and Kelpians evolved together on the planet Kamino where they shared a very complicated predator-prey relationship. Prior to the first century, the Ba'ul were hunted by Kelpians who had undergone the Vaharai, a metamorphosis that transforms Kelpians into deadly, fearless warriors. It got so bad for the Ba'ul that their population dropped to less than 260 individuals. They were able to save themselves from extinction by killing all of the post-Vaharai Kelpians and brainwashing the survivors into believing that the Vaharai is meant to be the natural end of a Kelpian life, when in fact it's just an evolution. By tricking their former oppressors, the Ba'ul became predators and the Kelpians their prey. In the Discovery episode, The Sound of Thunder, their deception was exposed and the Discovery crew was able to trigger Vahar'ai in all of the Kelpians on the planet. After this revelation, the Ba'ul could no longer dominate the Kelpians and they were forced to find a way to coexist. Number 5. 
Kazinti and Cations. The Kazinti are a race of humanoid felines and were one of the first adversaries of Starfleet. Interestingly, as we mentioned in our video about the Kazinti, they're actually related to the Cations. Now, this was never mentioned on screen, but it was confirmed in the character biography for the Cation character, Lieutenant M. Ress, from the animated series. The biography, which was made public through Lincoln Enterprises in 1974, explained that the two species split from each other, much like the Vulcans and the Romulans. The similarities between the two species are easy to notice. Both share the same cat-like appearance, but the Kazinti are less humanoid and more monstrous in appearance. Also, Kazinti females were described by the males as little more than animals, whereas Kaitians have a more equal society. We would definitely love to see more of the Kaitians and the Kazinti in future Trek. Perhaps they could explain what happened in their history that caused the two species to diverge. Number four, humans and Voth. Humans are not the only intelligent species to come from Earth. Aside from the cetaceans, there was also a genus of dinosaurs called the Hadrosaurs, who survived the mass extinction event that wiped out all of the other dinosaurs. Eventually, they evolved into highly intelligent, warp-capable species called the Voth, and left Earth, living as nomads in the Delta Quadrant aboard massive starships. The Voth were encountered by Voyager in the episode Distant Origin. They had a 65 million year head start with their technology, so Voyager was obviously outmatched. The lead Voth city ship was large enough to beam Voyager inside it. They also have transwarp engines and advanced spatial displacement tech, and they seem to be one of the oldest and most mighty empires in the galaxy, though it does seem like their technology had begun to stagnate by the 24th century. The Voth were extremely offended by the idea that they were related to humans, but the evidence was undeniable. Number three, changelings and the LS6 creature. In the Deep Space Nine episode, The Alternate, the scientist who raised Odo, Dr. Mora, came to the station to tell Odo that a life sign was detected on a gamma quadrant planet that looked very similar to his own. Odo, still unsure of where he came from, went to the planet with Mora and a small team to investigate. On the planet, LS6, Six, they found a strange monolith that they identified as a relic of Odo's people. Evidently, they were correct because a nearly identical monolith could be seen when they eventually visited the Changeling's planet in the search. There were no Changelings left on the world, suggesting that the planet was abandoned after they went into hiding, but a small Changeling-like creature remained. The creature also had the ability to shapeshift, changing shape every time that it reproduced, and it shared much of the same DNA with Odo. Dr. Mora said that they could be distant cousins. Unfortunately, the creature died shortly after being taken to the station because there wasn't enough carbon dioxide in the air, so we never got to learn more about this mysterious offshoot of the changelings. Number two, the Zindi. Six different sentient species evolved on the Zindi homeworld. The primates, arboreals, reptilians, insectoids, aquatics, and the avians. Every species shared similar forehead ridges, but they each occupied a different niche in the Zindi ecosystem. The different species frequently got into conflicts with each other. The battles escalated into a civil war that wiped out the Zindi avians and destroyed their homeworld. To maintain peace, the five remaining remaining species established the Zindi Council, a governing body run by two representatives from each species. After this point, the Zindi became much more united, though arguments and conflict were still commonplace. In the 22nd century, the Zindi were tricked into attacking Earth by the Sphere Builders, a faction in the Temporal Cold War who convinced the Zindi that humanity was destined to destroy them. We don't know much about what happened to the Zindi after this conflict, but they likely joined the Federation afterwards, since Daniels mentioned that there was a Zindi Starfleet officer serving aboard Enterprise J in the episode. Azati Prime. Number one, all humanoids. There is actually a reason why so many alien species in Trek resemble humans, and no, it has nothing to do with the show's budget. In fact, we learned in the Next Generation episode, The Chase, that most humanoid species in the galaxy share a common ancestor. Around 4.5 billion years ago, a humanoid species developed warp drive and set out to explore the stars. But since they were one of the first intelligent species to emerge, they could find no signs of other life. In their loneliness, they decided to seed countless worlds across the galaxy with their genetic code. This code would guide the evolution of these worlds to lead them toward a common form. When this was discovered, the Klingons and the Cardassians rejected it out of disgust, but the Romulans and the Federation were intrigued. They realised how profound of a discovery this was for the galaxy. Perhaps, without the help of these ancient humanoids, life would be much rarer in the Milky Way. Thanks very much folks for listening along, and thank you very much to Marsha for writing this article, and thank you to Mel for editing this wonderful video. What did you think? Let us know in the comments below. Remember you can get in touch with us over on Twitter, at Trek Culture. You can get in touch with us at Trek Culture YT on Instagram as well. I've been Sean Ferrick. You can get me at Sean Ferrick on Twitter. You're all awesome. You're all wonderful. Look after yourselves. Make sure that you're kind to yourself and make sure you look after your nearest and dearest. Live long and prosper. Slava Ukraina. Thanks very much.